Oh, there, I think there, uh, there is a way out for you guys to uh, get some work, like for the students, only for students in the universe. If you get like permission from the universe, you can take an internship. Mm -hmm. internship. But internship, we cannot get salary paid, but you can get some reimbursement for food and transportation. That's how. A lot of people ask, oh, I need to make some money. But you do need to study first. Right? You can do <laughs> some experience. Better just think about money. Thanks to school already gave the chance for the scholarship. Work the part. Study. Okay. That's for the immigration law. Uh, I'm going to talk about some like cases. You guys could have some chances, opportunity. That's also very help. Will be very helpful for you guys to live, work, study in China. Uh, the first uh, situation: street. Wrong, but have you guys really go for <laughs> go to talk, go to talk about it, right? and fight? <laughs> that's not that's good, that's not the worst. The worst thing you maybe have some corruption with the ladies, but hurt some something. Yeah, that before the COVID 19, that's happened every year for the college students around this year. They don't talk. You know what? Afterwards, they just, oh God, you're so regrettable and that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really <laughs> One thing, uh, 2019, uh, three guys, four guys, three guys from the uh, one CNN uh, country. They got drawn. They drawn onto the regime, the trend, onto seven yeah, back to the university. And encounter a lady, a beautiful lady. Okay, the three guys cannot control themselves. Lady Mary, any feedback. And this lamb was human, slam and hug and flee away. We use the camera, we use the camera. Why 15 days? Why the 21 days? But why they like take the lead twice, okay, seven days, six days more. Immediately, let's them take the play. That's all, all the scholarship. I wouldn't make it back by already in the right place. And a white guy from uh, the university, uh, not university, from. I rode to the motorcycle and crashed to the bridge, the water bridge, and fall down the bridge. Say bye. So don't get wrong. If you want to take, okay, you can get, you know, control yourself. It's very important. You wouldn't hurt yourself, you wouldn't hurt other people. Secondly, I think everybody has to get this. Wouldn't like to involve this case, but know this case. Online, internet, online, draw. Like people send a link, or give you a calling. Ask people, okay, you can diversify the call, you can return, you phone in. Remember, any charge your money, ask you to use your bank account 
or the verified code. Therefore, people who don't know them, I trust. You only can trust they have some guarantee, for example, they have some money in the Ali. Like you go to Ali to buy something. They cannot get a money out. The Taobao is like Asian. But if you just give money to get a little loan itself, I promise. 15, 100, <laughs> maybe five years. <laughs> That's the one the, the case situation. Another situation like making friends of one. That's a lot of, you know, for the young people, lady or boys. I go to it like the Friend, making friends, PPP. And then we'll talk to them. We 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 talk to them. Beautiful and really good lady. Why did she? We talk to them. And okay, that's a rich boy. Why should you not choose? <laughs> <laughs> If they are really great, why are they post really great pictures? If they are really great, do they have a lot of time? Or why to spend the time on them? Why to work with them? You already go there to find them. So don't trust them. this only, you know, especially for you know, really good picture, already have to ask about it for trust. Anyone ask about it? And if you cannot control yourself, you got cheated. They go into like threaten you to get a bond. You need to immediately to delete them. If they threat, delete them. Keep the evidence before you delete. Some people have this situation before. Threaten because they have some picture of you who wouldn't want other people to say. Very popular. Right? It is them important. But you better don't talk to them. Okay. The third situation for you know it now it's winter. Everything is wet. The skin is wet. Your room is very dry too. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for the I think all the elevator, all the building have the notice. Don't charge your battery. Feedback battery in the room. That's happening. Make people die every year. Every year. Not one person, really, three person. But one accident. Uh, Last March, there's a community. Maybe some guys know. Two kilometers away. Four people died. That's why battery exploded. At 2 p.m. 2 a.m. 12 p.m. So, and the fire burned most half buildings down. And the August, that happened to Tonjo. Or people die. You know, because people live together, if it really for you know students, the foundation to fall from that problem. If you want to charge, don't charge inside the building and don't charge midnight. Midnight is the first one. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the fourth yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 
thought, 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 more and more common for university students. We, the government, our president, took it very, very seriously for two years. And some people selling drugs. Selling drugs. Yeah. It's really that, that's thesis. I think it's very important for you guys because you guys come from that country, China. And some people, oh, there's more freedom. Some people, oh, my parents are not here. So you can control. Try this because my friend tried. Why not try? Oh, my friend, I'll try. You do it. Go try it. You try that, five minutes do. The sale is even just the wine gram. You will involve the women. This is women now. Don't try to buy. But drug can destroy the whole life. I think that's maybe one two percent of people who can recover from drugs. And every year we call the people. We call the students in idea for the students to try to drive. And some remember the students report each other. And we give the reporter like some warning. So you never know who in your back will go try drugs. Uh, about the driver license, uh, the good uh, avoid the traffic, the traffic accident. You always need to be careful. You want to be watch the always. Sorry. That's for uh, I think the like traffic police officer maybe the your director or maybe the faculty of medicate some class if you need some customer. Uh then that, that, that I think I want to say. Uh, don't deliberately to uh, preach. Preach in China. You, you, I think everybody has different religion. That's your freedom. But in China, you're not allowed to call you or call you a priest to deliver speech to the people of non age 18 or non religious people outside of the Places of religion. The only in, in this world, in the religious era, and if you want to deliver the religious speech to the Chinese, you need to get permission from administration. That's very sensitive. But sensitive means you have to score because we think, believe it, believe it's a personal freedom. And China, you know, China have a lot of religion too. We don't want to take religion. People, you know, culture, culture different. A lot of things like, you know, politics, not real politics. Think on culture, but not the history. So mutual respect is very important. We cannot forget, like Western, like Western, we think they yeah, have democracy, but they have 400 years of history. China have 5,000 years of history. And when the song called it, that we need that person. It's hard to say who is right, but it's hard to say. Mutual facts. Okay, uh, because the time is limited, uh, my speech finished. Leave the time for space questions. And it's a question. Brilliant. Well, feel free to ask. Question. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask about the visa. Uh, before uh, my country meets, like uh, my friends, after graduating the university, they have the program about the visa. 
that when we go to then make the new visa for some before it's uh, giving the three months, but after starting the pandemic, uh, after I think six months, the the uh, China is starting to give the for foreigners after the uh, graduating the university only one month. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the second time we go to the uh, that uh, visa for one month, it's a uh, Finishing, then we go to the make one more visa. Then uh, there is saying for uh, to us uh, go to the your embassy and uh, tell them to give you give to us a new visa from our country. But the, uh, our embassy say about this it's impossible. We need to take visa from the Chinese Chinese visa. Uh, then uh, when we go to back the uh, uh, Chinese for uh, for making the Chinese visa, they are saying tell tell to your the embassy to take uh, take you back to your country. It's impossible because of the pandemic. No flight, no any flight is to any country. Okay, we can go to Turkey, but no flights. We can go to Russia, no flights. So the Chinese are saying like. Uh, no, we, we can't give you more visa because you are graduated. You need to go back to your country. They, they are saying we can give the give you one month for chance. Why you don't talk uh, with your embassy? We already any time we are talking with them, but they are saying go to the Chinese uh, Chinese embassy and they take the new visa, the from Chinese visa, not. No, uh, the our country's visa. Visa. I don't know what this situation would, uh, what we need to do. Okay, I think that I have already had this problem to talk before. Uh, you meet our students something, uh, but I know the situation. For a lot of the people who just graduate, we want to uh, get uh, to two or three months for extension. Uh, for uh firstly uh that's possible that's possible not even possible that's possible uh before uh last year they gave the as long as we can just some people they use this advantage of the different things make Beijing authority very angry so they try to uh, limit the extension to check each everyone to check the people just get just go back you know a lot of people last year we fought a lot of people what do we do we we were very angry you know like we cooked the soup there's one mouth inside make apples bad but you say go to embassy the thing go to embassy the the, the I think PSB they didn't intention to do it didn't intend it to do that. They just want, okay, your embassy can give some certificate to prove you stay, you can, you should stay here legally. Or, you know, you're not just working. And find a job here illegally. That's why they require them. But I, I give you another solution because Beijing is different. It's quality percent in China. Uh, like other areas, for example, go to Shenzhen, Guangzhou, they have more, you know, more friends, much more. You know, kind of like, okay, the embassy, the people go to, uh, like, the UK embassy, Chinese people go to the UK embassy to apply the UK visa. Beijing more restrict, okay, to them, really easy. Comes <laughs> to really easy. The same. Uh, just Beijing uh, carry out to match the district, but other district, other city also well check carefully. But if you don't have any bad purpose, and extension visa, visa, like they they also you know ask uh, whether you if you can find a job, your purpose is correct. You know, if you stay here longer, it's better to find a job. Right? They, they think okay, they, your degree, your CV. You have potential. 
to get a job. So we give pension, government respect. But if there's a new flight, you cannot put it. Like you just print, also print the paper, so paper too. Any question? Okay, this is just one touch. <笑>中文的说 um, the startup, uh, you needed a, the startup would only uh, limit you to work in Zhongguanquan technology part, or you register company there, right? and there's a condition. I mean, you evaluate. Okay, your project works a lot that way. For example, you just say, okay. Open the design. <laughs> yeah, for you, there's some technology or something China gonna have. And you need the technology, engineer. And you immediately give a paper, you use a paper to go to the foreign expert user to get the data. You go to PSP, you immediately go to this. That's which require the project. In some extent, mm -hmm. so study hard. Get a big PM. Hey, my question. I didn't talk to you so I still like words. Anyway, here you say like uh, we need to um, like if we want to apply like for work and sometime after graduation like the school doesn't give us to find a job. So how to do like should we apply when we we don't graduate yet? What is it? So I want to know. Yeah, your question, I the pressure from your heart is you want us us it's a good purpose but the pressure with some conditions not good it's not about a school to look at that give you enough time you know while graduate before i graduate we're already looking for a job we already start looking for a job start looking for a job you know like you take the internship it's better you know to get permission when you in the university to find a chance to get internship from like big technology company Really famous company that's can kind of make a CV. In the case you don't have the right internship. What? In the case you don't have the internship. In the case that you don't have internship. Oh, you don't have internship. Yeah. That you need to start looking for a job earlier. I know you get degree later, right? But they know the certain when you can get a visa. The, the people, okay, you get when you can get degree from it. So is it? For example, I'm an employee. Yeah. I I want. Okay, I check your the timetable. You're going to get a degree, um, January. Okay, prepare the other document. We we'll get a diploma. We immediately take a five or three times. Everybody do you know prepare looking for a job. Even though there is really three months ahead. A lot. Better you know, do absolutely ahead. The earlier the better, <coughs> you have enough time to really waste or expectedly is happening. So did you get the target for the real thing for the week? Nothing. The talks is short. <laughs> Any question? Um, 我想问问这个生意 
，比如说我现在人是一个一个人，就比如说我以前做过这个，然后，呃，我还有想买，就比如说就工厂。工厂，然后我在我自己国家有一个朋友，他他有买，比如说什么东西，手机呀，还是还是什么这样的东西，还是就是养号啊，这样，就这样的东西。然后他跟我说，呃，帮我就卖那个东西，因为我已经有一个认识的一个人在工厂，这个是就我我我还有还是学生，还读书的。这个我能做还是不能做？因为这边不太快去。呃 ，you want to transfer something abroad, export something, right? Um, you the money good to your account in China or outside China? We cannot control. You understand? We cannot control mm -hmm. the money outside. Your question. If my it's in the business, uh, it means like my uh, my country me ask me to help him mm -hmm. for the buy something in the China. That's because you work for your the company in your country, not a work company, which you no. Know. I just uh, 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 um, that's the uh, because law is not in the, the regulated mm -hmm. country system. So if law, administrative law, criminal country law, don't regulate that. Um, China is too bossy. Yeah, because we only say work illegally. That's work in China. Work China. The company has rented. That's what you need. But you work for yourself for a company outside, right? This is not a company outside China. It's a one of one of the companies inside China because I'm buying some things from the in the in the China. Okay. Who give you money? The outside China. Yeah. <laughs> Who make money from you? Where you make money from? Outside, outside. Yeah. We talk about the inside. It's a legal, right? It's a legal. Yeah. 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 Any question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, when it comes to work visa, who is because when you were talking about work visa, you were talking about applying for work visa. So when you spoke from when you said, it seems as if uh, the company which you have applied for is the one to apply uh, for the work visa to you. Like you are the person after graduation, you cannot just apply for the work visa. You need a company here in China to apply for the work visa to you. Is that correct? Yeah, because most of the company have this qualification. Most company have this qualification. Yeah. And actually, uh, in, in China, needs engineers, technicians, uh, very knowledgeable. Also, need some people have special skill. You know, like uh, because Chinese and TikTok, or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. TikTok, with a lot of Point uh, student, point student. They just they speak really well Chinese because they have graduated in each country. Okay. They give a job, really. and Chinese. Uh, our uh, we give some, we give them to a big player. If we recruit people, we immediately should visit because they already check everybody. Really good to you know to, to try to get the government. They check you know they for example you speak twelve from here. Okay. 
Um, we don't have people speak frog, French and Chinese. They can help. Like, yeah, that makes it is like check the content. People post uh, that content. Check. Okay. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Try to find what personality you have and what uh, favorite you have. We're looking for a problem. You can start, before the you start studying, two years, one year, you start Chinese business. You want to try to, when you apply, when you apply for work with them, that's that point. Come at some weeks. So the child is very important. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You got that. You got you. I have something to say. You need to try this. You need to get to me. I don't care. Better. Is it possible to apply a driving license as a student? No. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible to apply the driving lesson uh, as a student? First of all, you have to be above 18 years old. <laughs> <laughs> If you have a great crisis in your country and the great analysis of the China, these two different situations. So, what you want to say about you to show you to your show us what the two of you give you a buy, you go in the Java buy, you can get out of the city to try out. All right. What you need to do is that uh, when you have the first of all, I mean, the diagnosis of your country, you have to go to the uh, chef office so that they can check your your driving license and also go through an exam in China. If you don't have a Chinese you have to go to the Chinese government to the Chinese government to the Chinese government to the if you pass the exams, then they'll give you the diagnosis. You need to do to the driver, driver's screen. 
big task and you go through the whole process. Yeah. yeah. It's a, a little bit expensive. Seven thousand. One million dollars in progress. Two or three months. And yeah, the like classic exam, you know, an exam class, knowledge. Okay, thank you.
If you answer their questions as simple as you need it, it's in that way you can protect yourself. They <laughs> <laughs> ask the questions because they're curious. It's it's really you know something. Many people will be, will be curious about um, just like in India, South Africa, and he has a uh, colleagues actually about uh, Indians uh, religions from Sindhu and all the religions. Then he explained it. He explained it well, and then that's it. Just that's it. You are make sure you are not the one who reads the questions. <laughs> you are the one to answer. In that way, you can protect yourself. Well, third thing, the third thing that is a good news because uh, um, in a few days, I think that in a few weeks, we're going to have um, the, the municipal governments have organized uh, an online job fair. Job fair. Right. Yeah. Yes. So it will have uh, many, many, more than 100 companies or corporations will enter their jobs. And it is especially, especially designed for our international students. And we turn lots of, uh, lots of, lots of interest about internship, about jobs, about making money as a boss, huh? <laughs> You want to come here. <laughs> <laughs> I love to do that. So that is the good news. And I, yesterday I just sent the news to Miss Young, and then she will she will um, edit edit the information and will send to your guys as our APP. Yeah, if you are interested, you can attend to the this online fair. So so you need to make sure. Like just now, officer mentioned about TikTok. You will own many, many jobs. It's a good opportunity. Is that you? <laughs> okay, last, uh, uh, then I'll, uh, if that's this reason, then I want to say the first two is very contact with lines. Yeah. If I were you, I will, I will more protect yourself. Okay, so the system is good news, obvious. And then next, I'm going to talk about my my my, my representation. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you for the advice. <laughs> So, yeah. so today is my topic about the Chinese power elimination. Okay.王老师，我现在有个学生，我就说有个问题，咱要不要就是说话，线上关于什么的，也不是警察名义的。so this part is about the Chinese elimination of uh, poverty. So before I continue, the I. I want to ask you a question. Do you think Chinese China is a centralized country? I mean, the administrative system, is this a centralized country or not? Uh, it, it is partially centralized and uh, tiny together. In the sense, the sense that uh, the, uh, all the province, they have autonomy on their own. Uh, 
of each coordinate. We get the half of the essential coordinate includes everything for those the half of the coordinate. So that's why I say any of these partially central and every external central like. Thank you. I think you have checked, checked no spend this time. I think you have done a little job here. <laughs> yes, uh, many, many, uh, many of my friends said uh, China is uh, generally speaking as a, a centralized country, centralized country, because we have, um, let's see, look at this. So China, I will tell you the reason, okay? I will tell you when um, this no matter is partly centralized or centralized, or then I will tell you when it comes from like this. So at present, China has 34 administrative divisions, 23 provinces. Those blue, those in blue, whatever. And then autonomous region of five. Oh, the, the blue one are province regions. The the purple one are provinces, and four this this these green ones are municipalities, and then this little two little red one they are special administration regions, as Hong Kong and Macau. One one extra thing, when you where is it? Taiwan. Taiwan. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Whenever you 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 do your homework. Okay, whenever you use your map, you use, use China's map. Never, <laughs> you have to include that in your homework whenever it's math. Otherwise, it's bad. <laughs> all right, so um, under the law, they are all approximately equal, no matter how big, no matter it's big or small. You know, autonomous region, basically, they are minorities. In Tibet, in Xinjiang, autonomous region, majority, they are minorities. Majority people in the autonomous regions are minorities in China. Okay, there are four level administration system. So that's the answer. Central government, right? Beijing central government, and then province, province, and then city, and then village. So basically, the administrative system in China is four levels, the four levels. They, they are actually from top to, to low four levels. And then why it come from this, uh, this uh, four levels? Because actually it can be traced back to 2000 years ago. 2000 years ago, uh, at the early, time in China, 2000 years ago, there are more than 100 countries or vessel states recorded in China, 140 countries in China. And then with 360 years of war, those kings fight each other, fight for food, fight for people, fight for resources, and then it continued for more than 300 years. And then finally, it became at the end it, uh, finally, seven left from 140 to seven, only seven left. And in the year of 2000, uh, 2 to 1 BC, this, this, this one, the bigger one in the West China, defeated other six. And since then, China became a unified country until now. So that's this. The, the one who defeated the other six is this emperor, Emperor Qin Shi Huang. Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor in China's history. And this one is the one who unified China. So we, we call it the very first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. Very powerful man. And then uh, he thinks them, we, we are in a unified country. And then this great person, this great emperor, he uh, has done many, many great things. But the only thing that today I want to mention is that Great War. Everyone knows Great War, yeah? One who does not know Great War, put up your hand. You don't know Great War. You don't know Great War. 
<laughs> yeah, the Great Wall is a single kind of symbol of China, right? Do you know how long is it? How long? 2500? Double it. 500 kilometers. It stretches 5,000 kilometers. And it, it, it was built by this emperor. By this start building it by this emperor, although many, many dynasties continue to build it. And then think about that um, the Qing dynasty, that is 2,000 years ago. And the population there is only 20 million. 20 billion. And the technology, think about the technology of 2,000 years ago. And this uh, great was built on hills, right? And the top of the hills, very, very difficult place. And I think about 2,000 years ago, the technology and only 20 million people, the Jin, Jin Su Huang can build it without a unified country, without a very centralized administrative system can he do it. Never, right? So this emperor, Qin Shi Huang, in order to control the vast lands, and he divided the country into 60, uh, three, uh, 36 parts to administer. And then uh, at that time, since that time, the concept of a unified nation means a strong power become the foundation of China of all the Chinese government system. Make sense? From the Great Wall. Okay, this is the why it is centralized. And it is centralized from 2000 years ago. It's not it's not the products of the founding of this country. It is the products of 2000 years ago from the first emperor of China. So the reason why I talk about this, uh, um, I, I choose the I choose only some of the um, information about uh, China, which are very closely related to poverty elimination. Okay, these are new knowledge. The second thing is that China's uh, what do you think about China's resources? It's a rich country in resources or poor country in resources. Sources, I mean, natural resources. Uh, rich or poor? Uh, rich? Rich, yeah. Rich? Yeah. So, land area, the third largest, just ran after Russia and Canada. Yes, land, rich, yeah. yeah. And then China besides uh, 171 types of mineral resources, and many of them run top 10 world. Rich? Yes. But? Or no? And this is it? So you will see a, a few maps. Questions. What is map you can see? From this map, what's your, what's your, what, what, what can you say from, conclude from this uh, map? Yeah. Yeah. This is a map of China. Yes, I know. <laughs> And then? Yeah. Right. Right. So from west to the east, you can see the latitude is what? Yes. So it's on a west an elevated. It's an elevated west and a low lying east from this map. map. Got it? Second. From this map, what can, what can you say? The arable land. The arable land is, is only is the, 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 the green one. So China is the third largest land area country in the world. But the arable land, the land you can produce crops only here. Only here. The other places, Mostly mountains. So, the arable land here 
It's only 12% of the total land in China. Thank you, sir. So you can say that is the basically distribution of all the land areas. There are 33% 30, of mountains, 26 plateaus, 19 basins, 12 plains, 10 hills. So two thirds of the country land areas are mountains. Arable land, 12%. And the cent central and western regions are wastelands and deserts. But in those areas, let's say those are the lands, or those wastelands. Deserts. So these are all country. Not not all cities or places like Beijing. These are all China. In those places, cold in winter, hot in summer, few rain, and it's not obviously not favorable for crops. Crops. Right? But that is what China has. One population. Now India. <laughs> so the population, China is the largest population, has the population in, in the world. And it accounts for 18% of the public of the world total population. 18%, nearly 20 of the world's population. So summarize. To summarize, China is a centralized administrative system, centralized country, rich in resources. Question mark. Okay, uh, you just show us like the, the map of China, and we have seen that there is like a report which is available too small. But also the population is too many people. So I wanted to know like how you guys do to increase all the population. Like is this small part that you guys use to increase all the people? The answer is yes. How I can just tell you. So with only uh, those uh, twelve percent of arable land in China, and these twelve percent arable land and arable lands accounts for seven percent of the world total, and the population accounts for twenty, almost twenty percent of the world total. Right? That is China. Popul that that is China, and then how are we going to with this seven percent? How to feed twenty percent? Is there a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, I'm going to talk about China's situation. These four parts. First, how do you say anyone knows SDDS? As a as a student in forestry, you you are supposed to know SDDS. Mm -hmm. Anyone know SDDS? Yeah. Yeah. Who made it? The United Nations. The United Nations. So SDGs means Sustainable Development Goals. It is set by the United Nations. That's basically 17 goals in total as it has set by, set by United Nations. Those are those are the 17 goals. And the top one is no poverty. Okay? And by the United Nations. So it's a world consensus on eliminating poverty. And it's the top one. So the goal, the goal is to and the poverty in all its forms, <laughs> everywhere. So that's the United Nations. So by definitions, you know, by US definition of extreme poverty is uh, measured by money, by money, uh, monetary measures. 
That means people living on less than US dollars, no more than 1.9 US dollars. Basically, uh, 2.3 US dollars. This uh, we call it extreme, they are under uh, extreme poverty. That means severe depletion of basic needs like food, shelter, drinking water, sanitation, healthcare, education, and access to information. But that's the definition of United Nations. And we, China, Chinese government, have another definition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you. It's a little, it's a little video that then, then, then we will tell you how, what, what is the definition by our Chinese. Poverty alleviation is one of the biggest stories to come out of China in recent years. Since 2019, I traveled across the countryside to experience firsthand the work on the ground. Some concepts related to the project can be hard to understand including the term extreme poverty, which China says was eliminated nationwide in late 2020. So what exactly is extreme poverty? The definition of extreme poverty goes beyond the income dimension to include living conditions. In Kuejo, a village in Southwest China, Sichuan province, I visited during my reporting on poverty application, a household officially registered as poor can only be taken off that list after meeting a long list of criteria. That includes access to clean water, proper sanitation, electricity, even having a functioning television. So it's not just about what family earns, it's also about how it lives. So that's the Chinese definition of uh, poverty elimination. That is the goal of, of, of the, of the uh, poverty elimination. Then I'll continue with some the Chinese achieve, achievements up to now in poverty elimination. So according to, um, that is the, just now we mentioned about what China has. We have 7% arable land, 18% of our population, and when it divided by 1.4 billion population, so China ranks 36 in the world. According to the national, the Chinese National Bureau statistics, in, 2000, in 1978, it's about 800 million our people population in China. And until now, zero. From last year, zero. And this, this map is from the World Bank. The red one is the world population of poverty under extreme poverty. And this um, black one are the Chinese poverty population. So you can say China has achieved zero extreme poverty 10 years ahead of UNSDGS well, schedule. Because UN's SDGs said 2030, it will achieve the goal. But China, late last year, China has already achieved it. In China, for this such a big country, we can see there are zero population, zero households are under <laughs> extreme poverty. Now, so that is the um, three years ago, no, four years ago, 2017, what the um, World Bank group on opening um, press conference by President Jin Kong Lin. Ping. Jin Kong Ping. I don't know what that means. As the uh, annual meetings, he said, it's one of the great stories in human history. Frankly, starting in 1990, 
With the evolution of China's economic system and the embrace of the global market, China has lifted over 800 million people out of poverty. So most of the progress that has been made in going from 40% of the world living in extreme poverty to, no, to now less than 10%. Most of that progress happened in China. So we are looking, always looking for the lessons from this, from this experience and it's continued just four years ago. And then late, late last year, China has achieved that goal. How did China do that? Ready, that's your question. Very simple, four stages, very simple. Four stages. The first stage is, the, is from the foundings of the People's Republic of China to 1978. At that time, we call it the poverty alleviation in command economy. Many people call it planned economy, but we think that uh, home command economy will be a suitable, more suitable uh, phrase for that. So to, as the funding of the, uh, the, of the countries, we have very, very low productive forces. China now said at the funding, at the very beginning, uh, 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 just uh, after the uh, liberation, the founding of the country, we said to, uh, to, 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 the, to, to, to the officials, what we can build, what we can make, we can make, we can make uh, chairs, uh, tables, we can grow uh, crops, but we can not produce a car. We cannot produce a plane. Not on, not not mention rockets or such fancy things as the funding, as the funding father of the country at the beginning. So and because uh, at that time we have very low protective forces because we have many many years of uh, war uh, with with the, the Japanese uh, invasions, and then we are not lucky. We were not lucky at that time. There are very large scale famine, hunger everywhere in China. And then at that time, the government focused on very basic survival problems with very, very li with limited policy tools to use. So at that time, the goal is to restore and develop production to ensure minimum living standing of the poor groups by the government direct actions, direct giving supplies. You work to give them jobs okay, to, to, to the people who are in real need, real need. So at that time, the effects of that the policy under the command economy, it helps, but it's very limited help. Because at that time, the annual per capita income of the farmers was only less than 20 US dollars annual per year. 20 US dollars, think about that, okay? And the growth rate of per capita income was only 1.9% at the first stage. At that time, the main problem is to survive, okay? And the government don't have much tools, uh, policy tools to use. So that's the first stage. Second stage is from 1978 to 2012. And this time we call it the poverty elimination by national development programs. And those uh, are mm, the policy focus on regions. So the regions, the areas, you can say those uh, different colors. Those are the 14 areas we call it contiguous poverty stricken regions. So just now you, you probably you can you still remember. All those areas are what? Mountain areas, right? Mountains, wasteland, deserts, those areas. Okay? So the poverty stricken regions, and it is contiguous regions, okay? Contiguous regions in 14, uh, there are 14 regions, and totally there are 509, uh, there are five, nearly 600 poor counties in those 14 regions. So at that time, by national uh, development pro programs, the main goal is, the, is to promote development of those areas and, and the narrow the regional relative gap. So this has good results. And for those 592 poor countries supported by the state, 
the average annual growth of uh, farmer per capita net income in these countries are 12.8%, higher than the national average. For the poor areas, higher than the national average, the net income. And then the proportion of rural poverty population has dropped to 2.8%. And this, the, the, the key words is region. The key words is uh, the regions. Because this, this time, it is uh, focused on region poverty elimination. And then the third, this state is very interesting and very, very important. We call it precision poverty elimination. The last, the stage, stage two is uh, focused on regions, areas. Yes, with uh, more than 60 years of uh, develop, de development, and then those areas it's become smaller, right? It become then, at this stage, the poor population has gradually changed from regional to points distributions. Make sense? Therefore, the states mainly focus on the individual households for this country. Okay. So usually, if you focus on individuals, that is usually the most difficult part. It's the last mile of the journey. Right? Make sense? And then the clear goal was set at that time. That is, eliminate poverty by 2020. That is the goal set by the central government. How to do it? Six precision, six precision, six precise. First, to, to, to precisely find your targets means who needs help. Who is the poor person? Who is the poor household? Who is the poor family? Where? Where? So that's the who need to be helped. And the second, who to give help? Right? The one who needs help, who gives help to them? So this is a precise assignment of people or institutions to those villages. And the third one, how? How to help? It's precise, precisely find the uh, project arrangement, precise measures to households, and precise of funds. How to make it? And lastly, how to evaluate? If we can, if we say the household has already been get out of the get rid of the poverty, how to evaluate? Five components of poverty elimination. So that is a very uh, in co coincidence with the UN definition. I summarize the two water freeze and three guarantees. Means no worry about food, no worry about housing, compulsory education guaranteed. In China, nine years compulsory education. And then basic medical services guaranteed. Housing, mm -hmm. no worry about clothing, sorry. No worry about clothing, no worry about food, two no worries, worry free. And three guarantees education, medical, housing, three guaranteed. Five projects put forward according to different poverty courses. For example, number one, promote, promote production. For the areas, for example, for areas, probably these areas are suitable or to grow like um, apple trees, right? Because a different different place, they have different development, right? For the place for who are uh, whose land where the land is suitable for grow like uh, apple trees, then the, the government will send officials, technicians, even the citizens. To those areas and help the villagers, help the farmers to grow the apple tree and improve the quality of the fruits. So that's the first policy. And the second, relocation. What do you mean? Do you know what this means by relocation? What happened in relocation? Think, think, think that. Like maybe development and intrigue them to live there. Move people out from the yeah. mountain area. For example, the place where not yeah. suitable for living. 
where it's not supposed to be the old. For example, the government might find, uh, let's say, diamond for gold or for oil. No. <laughs> in this sense, in this sense, this, relo this relocation means uh, ecological relo relocation. Later on, we'll, I will give you a case study about relocation. Okay, basically means it's either a place that is uh, ecologically fragile, right? It's uh, extremely not good for people's survival in the remote areas and mountains, mm -hmm. those places. Then we we all reload, we, all, we, we, we build, we build the villages with, uh, with, with very good um, um, dormitory buildings, not dormitory, apartments, not only apartments, but also met uh, with also hospitals, schools, and industries. Because if you relocate, if you move people out, you have to give them jobs. Yes, you have to make sure they have schools to go and they have they can go to the hospital. Right? So that that's what relocation means basically. And you know, it's a very, very difficult job for the officials, for the local officials to do. Because you have you have to persuade the people who they say, I live here for generations. Why should I leave? Think about the difficulties. How can you persuade those people, those villagers, those farmers out of their their homes, which they live for generations. Yes? So the officials, the local officials, they take a lot of time. You know, it's not very easy, say, it's not like a military order. You, can, you must go, you go. No, you have to persuade them. One time, times, five times, you know, many, many, you, you have to persuade them to take them to say, this is the new home. And then you, in the new home, you have blah, 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 such thing. You have drinking water, you have safe water. You have you you have hospitals. You have school. Your your children can go to the the, the, the good schools, the school education. So that takes a lot of job to do. The third one, education, because we Chinese we think that education is an the most important key key to cut off the intergenerational intergenerational poverty. Five welfare, that's the government will save you at last as the last point. Oh, so at the end of uh, 2020, China has held this uh, grand meeting and declare we won the battle against poverty and the nine 100 million rural people be lifted out of poverty ahead of the UN schedule in years. So that is the uh, official assembly. For the, the last stage is from last, last year to now. We call it a rural revitalization and common prosperity. It is a five year transition period to maintain the result of poverty elimination. Because the, power, the result of uh, poverty elimination is very difficult to reach. And then you have to, you cannot say, okay, you have been lifted out of the poverty, then you go yourself. No, the government says you have to maintain it. You have to keep keep them keep them going to have to help them gain the self sustainable de development. So it's a five year transition period program to help them to narrow the gap between the low income and the other groups and to promote the revitalization of those poor areas until common prosperity. Case studies. So uh, just now, we, you, you, I, I, I told you that there are six positions, right? Whom to help, who give help. And then in China, every universities in China, every companies in China, no matter it's state-owned or private companies, and every government, no matter it's central government or provincial government or city the government, like Beijing municipal government, every institutions in China, be paired up with the counties or villages in those poor areas, including our university, Beijing Forest University. We are assigned, we are uh, paired up with, uh, uh, called, with, with a county called Huyu Qianqi, and then you know Inner Mongolia. This is Inner Mongolia. And then we are paired up with here. Yeah. It's uh, basically, it's a uh, uh, a county um, of uh, Hmong minority, Hmong 
among minorities here. So uh, 80 years ago, we have been one of the first batch of universities to participate in this uh, national animation. What have we done? The universities have what? Knowledge. Yes, professors, right? Scientific technologies, those faculty members, that's what universities have, right? So the university, our university, make full use, take full advantages of the university's advantages. We send the faculty members to the uh, to the county uh, to help them gain sustainable, gain self sustainable development. You know, we send the faculties uh, um, concerned uh, related to like forest engineering, forest breeding, gardening, um, economy, forest economy, biofood. Those faculties to carry out like uh, practical technician technology promotion, short term training, and con and consulting services and other activities. We have sent 50, more than 50 faculty members to Huiqin to work there. And and in these 80 years, the university has invested 2.8 million yuan to support 29 projects, ranging from cultivation, ranging from from seedlings. How to what how to choose what to choose according to the local land situation, what kinds of uh, species, and then how to make these species grow well, and then how to how to improve the, the quality of those uh, like the, the, of, of those fruits, and then lastly how to make it as a product and how to package it. We 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 even. We even designed the package for the product. And finally, we helped the villagers to build Taobao, an e-commerce, and help them to and tell them how to sell on Taobao of those products. So the university has built a whole chain for the, for the villagers from seed to products. Okay, so this is the one. This is the School of Technology. Anyone from School of Technology? Oh, that's So School of Technology has customized the first, the first the fruit in new creation and the cutting machine. So this is a Chinese pear leafed crab apple, crab apple. So that is the local fruit. In China, and this is the machine. The school of technology, the faculty, the professors made that customize that, and then increasing such. This is uh, increasing the, the 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 production and the money be made from this uh, this product. So the university to produce the whole process. See from this is the package. This is the design. Package design the university do, and then this is the Taobao, the, the, the online streaming, Taobao Dai Huo, you know, you know, right? So this is the Taobao shop, and then the, the, the leader of the university to say how they sell, what's the product, how much, how much money they have been made. So the university basically have the whole chain of the, of the enterprise operation for the villagers in Huo County. So those are the faculty. That this is the, uh, the the teachers from the school of uh, forestry. I think there are many many students from school of forestry, right? Yeah. The teachers from fa forestry faculties help the farmers to eliminate the pests and disease of those uh, roots of these uh, uh, economic trees. And, and then just now we mentioned education is one of the five uh, policies to help. To cut off the uh, the the, the uh, poverty elimination education, so in in the last uh, um, five years, six seven years, we sent ten batches of teachers 
and graduate students to the local school from primary to high school to teach. Us, um, to teach uh, nearly seven thousand teaching hours benefits uh, more than sixty as more than three thousand families, and it, it helps this school nearly five thousand students from primary to high school for those uh, ten batches of uh, teachers. Until now, this year, we still send teachers and graduate students to go there. It's not to teach only for a couple of days. They stay there for semesters, for years. You know? So that's the university concern. And then so we are not the only one who do it. All university done that in China. Not only on classroom teaching, but also organize extracurriculum programs for those students. So those are the pictures. Even more, we open we, we, we organize online study tours. Not all the not, not all the local students can go out, but we can take the take their minds out of the little county, right? We took them not not only to say the Forbidden City online study tour, not only Great Wall Forbidden City, but also to, also to let them to visit the famous universities in China, Tsinghua University, Beijing Normal University, Peking University, also our university. And also, and even that, because we send visiting students out of China, and even we take them to, say, the University of London, the UK, online studies, open their minds, open their horizons. So we think it is the most meaningful thing to plant seed of hope to kids. Agree? Agree. I love this picture very much. So that's the first case of what university is done. Oh, that is not the forest sectors. Okay. This is not the new uh, PPT because I have another a uh, case about how the forestry sector is done to eliminate the uh, the, the poverty elimination. Hmm. Maybe we can choose to stay until ne next time, or you want to, me to tell you about a little bit about forestry mm -hmm. sector's efforts on poverty elimination? It's not the PPT? No. But anyway. Because this is uh this is not the, the new PPT. Uh, I've and I've added the uh, forestry because uh, many of our students are from forestry res rich resources uh, countries. But um, at this time, the, 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 I have not that in hand. But uh, let's simply conclude that five lessons from China. What why we achieve the goal of eliminating extreme poverty two years ago. They are very simple, five lessons. First one, a capable and active government and top level commitment. So this is uh, President Xi. And just now I mentioned that there are four levels of administrative system, right? From, from, from central to village. And these four gentlemen, they are the top leader of those levels. So President Xi Jinping said that no single poor area or single poor person should be left behind in achieving this goal. What goal? The goal is power elimination. Second, many, many, many people argue that, oh, China is too different. China is so much different from other countries. And we can basically learn no, nothing from China. I argue that. I argue that. For example, precise poverty elevation by building network by one to one strategy. Just now I mentioned that uh, every institution in China have been paired up with the locals. So this is the data. There are 340 countries in eastern China. You know, in eastern China, where the most arable land here, 
they are more developed. You know, China is a very is the, the, the differences between East and the West is a uh, huge, they are large development area, uh, the gaps. So basically the eastern areas more developed, like Beijing, Shanghai, Zhejiang, Jiangsu, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, Xiangang, those places, cities are all in the east. Right? So there are more than there are 343 counties in eastern China have been paired up with 574 counties in those 14 provinces in central and western China. Three million officials, three million officials has been uh, three million officials have been dispatched as the chief residential officials in those four villages. What 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 do you understand? What what do you think about um, residential officials? You know what is meaning. By, what what is mean by what does it mean by three, by residential officials? Yes, they live there. But those three million people, three million officials, including our university, we sent we sent our staff to there, live there. They are not supposed to fly here and there as a flyman. No, they are, they are supposed to live there, to work there, to guide, to work together with those villages, with the local staff, to guide, provide services and consultations, to guide those villages how to do it. So altogether, there are more than 3 million officials have been dispatched as the residential officials in those poor villages. To these enterprises means there are 22,000 enter enterprises also being paired up with those regions, with those uh, uh, companies in those areas. So that's the second lesson. To building networks, to help them building networks, a one to one sort of strategy. And then the third lesson, why I argue that, because I think this is the lesson every, every country can do it. Right? Part with more markets. You know, we, help this, we help them to produce the, the, pro, the, the products. And then you have the products does not mean money, right? You have to sell them. To cultivate markets means to create markets for products and the labor from those poor regions. Altogether, there are this 136,000 products have been identified in those in 22 provinces, including nearly 2,000 counties and 40 thousand suppliers. So at the end of last year, consumption of these products from those poor areas has exceeded 200 billion in China. So this is the picture that the citizens in big cities, they are choosing products from poor villages at the supermarkets. Even in China, in Beijing, in Wudaokou, in Wumei, you can find the products from those poor areas. It's a special area. It's clearly said, clearly said, it, these products are from which poor areas. So cultivate markets. So finally, that's the three lessons. And the fourth lesson, education. The part of the transmission, the education. Lastly, post poverty programs, right? When they lift out, out, out of the poverty, you have to help them uh, another five years to maintain the, the, the right situation, the post poverty programs. Okay. Early, I don't I don't know whether I answered your questions. <laughs> 
So that is uh, so much uh, very, um, I'm very yeah. regret, sorry that I didn't put the forest sectors about those uh, ecological fragile areas, how to help them out of the poverty. Next time we will have, have chance. So that's basically what China has to do, very simple, with the very, very simple opportunities. Uh, I don't know whether I'm, I have been this lecture is very poor. This is boring or too much. Or are there any questions about the lectures? Yeah. yeah. As you mentioned, the eastern part of China was very bad compared to other parts of China. But in Xinjiang, the cotton production, which is called white wood, which is crop in the wood, is India produces 84% of China. But as compared to Eastern part, why is this Eastern part not reach as much Eastern part? Because their production is so much higher compared to all other Chinese provinces, in cotton especially. If cotton is higher, it is richer. So why is this province is not much developed as compared to Eastern part? <laughs> Which country, if you it should be a rich place, it's, it's, uh, it's by GDP, right? So if it's only cotton itself, can it be? If it's only in cotton, it cannot make the whole region as rich as you want, you know? You have to be. No, no, to be a bit, just like take it to a jump province as, as an example. You have to be a very whole, complete set of industry chains. Right? For example, if in Xinjiang, the how is it, the delivery or logistic delivery will not be efficient as in Eastern part of China. Right? So that's only one example. So the only one industry in one specific area cannot leave the whole area of poverty. It has to be a complete industry change. I know this uh, is getting hard. <laughs> Any questions? No more questions? Okay, thank you for coming and happy weekend. Everybody signed this liner of paper. Oh, uh, if you uh, have done that, just to there and I'll apply them.